and welcome back to episode 2 of the NI Women's Football Show, the brand new series dedicated to bring you all the latest news from across all areas of women's football in Northern Ireland. And here's what's coming up on today's show. The 65 Caps to her name and a day job which often sees her mingling with the likes of Steve Davis and Stephen Gerrard, our special studio guest this week can only be one person and that's Northern Ireland International, Debbie Lance. We also catch up via Zoom with Linfield ladies Mia Fitzsimmons as the Blues start their preparation ahead of the new season. And last, but by no means least, it's a show debut for Lauren McCann. She'll be here with all the latest news from across the women's game in Northern Ireland. Plenty then to look forward to, but what better way to start than to welcome into the studio from Rangers and Northern Ireland, it's the one and only Demi Vance. Demi, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Only right way to start today is probably really get an update on, on the injury. Obviously, we all seen you coming off during that game against Belarus where you sustained what turned out to be a cruciate ligament injury, which is quite a long-term injury. So how's things going with the recovery from that? Yeah, so far my recovery's going, it's going good. I'm four months coming this week um, from a surgery. So, you know, I think whenever like the injury happened, it took me a few weeks to let it really sink in. You know, it'd be out like long-term. You know, I'm 29 now and this is the first long-term injury that I've yeah. had and I think maybe I'm quite lucky in, in that way but um, yeah I'm just taking it step by step and not trying to rush it because sometimes I can tend to become a bit impatient. But <laughs> I think most people can. I'm learning to have a bit of patience throughout this process so <laughs> yeah so far so good. Couldn't have came at a worse time obviously the, the big playoff games coming up Rangers were obviously going around the league so it's a really really bad time to pick an injury up just one of those things but bad time. Yeah like I think there's no real good time for the, an injury like this to happen but you know I've thought about this and I don't really know whether it was a good or a bad time you know mm -hmm. like I haven't really missed too much club football and um, I will be missing the rest of the season but you know there was a time where I wasn't playing and neither was anybody else um, but obviously missing these two playoffs was was a big blow for me personally because um, obviously I think we've worked so hard to get there but you know I believe that the girls will be able to do it. That's hope so. Obviously, when we're recording the show, we're still waiting on the, the second game we've played, so we don't know how that's going to turn out. Hopefully, we'll be celebrating with champagne, not celebrating with flat beer. But uh, at the end of the day, first leg, what were your thoughts on that one? Well, I figured out I'm not made for watching football anyway, that's for sure. <laughs> well, you like me and so hiding behind quicker, the sofa? The quicker that I can get back on the, on the pits, the better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, you know, everybody just dug deep. I think. Um, you know, we've changed a lot of um, our mentality and stuff in the past year and a half when, when Kenny and the staff have came in. And I think, like, throughout this this campaign, it's really, really showed. You know, we've just been going from strength to strength. And, you know, I feel like now we go out every game to win. And yeah. we believe that we're going to be able to do that. And, you know, it showed. You know, I think we do have quite a few starters. Well, I think starters that, you know, haven't aren't playing in the playoffs. So, I think... Um, all the younger kids and stuff really stepped up and they t really took their opportunity um, and I'll chew because we won 2-1. I guess like, watch, like the rest of us watching TV to find ourselves all of a sudden 1-0 up and we didn't even see the goal. It was really bizarre, wasn't it? I know <laughs> and I was, I think I was like, it must have been three minutes behind and then they scored <laughs> and they didn't show the goal uh, and then I had to wait another two minutes for the goal. That's, that's yeah, so it was, yeah, I definitely got my steps in that game. <laughs> totally I was mad, all the up and down living there. And when Simone got that winner, I think we all near erupted, to be honest. It was a fantastic strike. Yeah, no, it was. Like, Simone in front of the goal, like, you're going to back her every time. You know, mm -hmm. she's um, been a very consistent player and she's a massive player for us as well. And um, I think she's scoring in all cylinders for her club as well, which is really good to see as well. In terms of the Northern Ireland experience, I think you're up to around, around about 65 caps we're at now, since you obviously you made your debut. You've obviously seen a lot of change over that time. I mean... I can remember a few years ago you were sort of saying, no, no, it's been this week, how many they're going to lose by, but all of a sudden the whole situation's changed over the last few years. What do you put all that down to, the changes? I think, like, with the IFA and the backing that they've given women's football, um, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, the grassroots and the pathway for us has really changed and it's really improved a lot over the years, but, you know, like I say, like, Kenny and the staff have came in and they've changed our mentality, um, and it's came such a long way from whenever I made my debut in Spain, I was... Um, 15, um, and I, I'm, I was always looking up to you know, all the older ones, and now unfortunately I you am, the, I am all the yeah. older ones. Um, but yeah, I think you know, whenever I was younger, it was like you say, like you know, we're going out to kind of keep the score down, but that's not even in our thoughts anymore. You know, it's how much we can win the game by, or how much possession we can keep, or 
how many passes we can complete. Um, and I think that's great for us, you know, and I think it's really good for all the younger kids now, whereas when I was younger, I didn't think that I could get a career out of it. Yeah. Um, but now for a kid from the weeds can grow up and want to be a professional footballer, yeah. just like every boy has that dream too. Yeah, it's great to see that. In terms of your, your own career, obviously it's, it's taking you right around the world. I know you had a short spell in America. You also spent about three years or so in Australia, in the Redbacks, was it? Is that the name of the club? Um, uh, yeah. yeah. How did that come about? I mean, you don't sort of say one day I'm going to go to Australia to play football, do you? Well, that's kind of exactly what it was. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, that. like I played, you know, I I moved to the Glen Thorne when I was 16. Um, whenever I got called up to the Northern Ireland squad, I decided to move clubs. Um, mm -hmm. Just the, So I joined Glen Thorne when I was 16. And I think I was maybe 22 whenever I moved to Australia. But there just came a point where I just wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it across the water or, you know, to make this my career. And I thought, you know, I want to travel the world. So I just up and left and um, went to Australia and joined the team. I actually, Nadine Colwell, she, um, we went together um, and she stayed for the, she played for the same team as I did and we won the league out there and we just had a bit of a different football experience um, and I don't regret any of it. It was fantastic and, you know, it was, it was kind of hard to watch Northern Ireland progress as obviously we took some time out of football mm. to do that. Um, but whenever we came back in, you know, we were lucky to be called back up and be a part of that. Even as a life experience, just spend that time in Australia, it's just a completely different world, isn't it? Yeah, massively. I think I really, um, really matured and just grew up. You know, whenever I moved across, you know, you're on your own. You're living on the other side of the world without your family and you're having to make new friends. And I don't, I don't think you have any other choice other than to, mm -hmm. you know, grow up and start looking after yourself. Um, yeah, so I, I learned a lot from Australia, you know, I loved every minute of it. but. You know, there comes a time where you're like, okay, am I going to stay here or am I going to go home? And, you know, for me, like playing for your country is the biggest achievement that you can have. And I just wasn't ready to give that up. Okay, we'll hear more from Demi shortly. But next up on today's show, it's time for a roundup of some local women's football news. And for that, it's over to Lauren McCann. <laughs> We start with Glenthorne, who have been very active in the transfer window ahead of the new season, bringing in three new players and two new coaches to the Oval. Northern Ireland international Lauren Wade has rejoined the reigning league champions after a spell with Glasgow City in Scotland. Young striker Casey Howe has also made the move to the East Belfast club from big two rivals Linfield. Completing a hat-trick of signings, Jennifer McDade sealed her switch across the border, linking up with the Glens from Shelburne Ladies in Dublin. In addition, Stephen Murray and Leslie Winder have joined in a coaching capacity, each coming with huge pedigree, with Glen Torn look to boost their hopes of retaining all four trophies this season. Cliftonville have also dipped into the transfer market to strengthen their squad in preparation for the commencement of the league in the coming weeks. They have bolstered their ranks with the arrivals of Northern Ireland Under-19 internationals Grace McKim and Shona Davis. McKim has arrived from Limfleet Ladies, whilst defender Davis returns to the North Belfast outfit after a year with Glen Torn. The Reds will have a new shirt sponsor for the upcoming campaign, having teamed up with Emer's Wish to raise stem cell donor awareness in Northern Ireland. Emer Smith tragically died in 2019 after complications from a donor stem cell transplant, and her family started this campaign to encourage people to donate their stem cells to help those in need of life-saving transplants. Cliftonville, along with the other Premiership clubs, have shown their support for this campaign. The Reds will proudly wear Emer's Wish Dragonfly on their shirts for the season, and banners promoting stem cell donor awareness will be placed around Solitude for games throughout the campaign. Meanwhile, Division 2A side Bally McCash have pulled off a huge coup by appointing Ram McConville as their manager for the new season. A UEFA A licensed coach, McConville has recently returned home after a spell in charge of 4 4 Farmington in the Scottish Premier League. He has also had a hugely successful three year stint at Limfield Ladies, winning eight trophies during his time at the club. He will run the rule over his new team this week as Bally McCash, like many sports clubs across the country, returned to training. That completes our news roundup for the week. Now back to Colin in the studio. Okay, so 
let's look now at basically your time at Glen Torn. Obviously, I know it was done over two spells, but five league titles, seven Irish Cup wins, pretty successful career at the Oval. I think it's eight, is it not eight? I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah, no, I did. Um, Me too, I, I didn't forget that, of course. No, can't forget, <laughs> the, can't forget them. Um, yeah, like I joined Glen Torn when I was 16, and you know, at that time, like, at that time, no real coaches came to other teams to get other players. And I just was kind of unsure, like, where I was going to go or how you kind of... I just knew that it was time that I had to move on to another club. And I remember that I was training with Glen Thorn and I was getting close to the time that you had to sign. And mm -hmm. I just was so unsure. I was like... I trained with um, Crusaders um, a couple of sessions and Cheryl Lamont, who was the manager at the time, was... Um, she's pretty... She can be pretty stern <laughs> when she wants to be. Um, and I remember she pulled me, she had heard that I had went to one session with the crews right. and she was pulling me to the side and she was just like, that's not how this works. She was like, you come here to train. She's like, if we're signing, you sign by Sunday. Okay. And I was like, no, no, I'll sign now. <laughs> so, so that was it. But um, yeah, like I never look back, you know, I've enjoyed, I've like, there's been quite a lot of people that have, um, that I've played, been lucky to play with um, throughout that and, you know, the likes of Kelly Bailey and, Kim Turner and you know now they've all retired and then like we but like the non Ireland team you know, I ended up being one of the older ones whenever I left and yeah. I think it was strange whenever I came back from um, Australia there was no other team that I was going to go to you know Glen Thorne's like my home so I had to like be reintroduced to all these kids coming through <laughs> and for the first time I felt like the new yeah. kid on the block yeah um, but no yeah like we've been really successful and I think you know Glen Thorne have always had like a winning mentality. And, you know, if we're one nil down with 70 minutes to go, at no point did we ever think that we were going to get beat. And I think that really saw us through, you know, with that was the mentality that Cheryl, um, you know, Cheryl had with us. Yeah, they certainly did a remarkable well. The women's game over in Northern Ireland has came on leaps and bounds locally, sort of over the last few years as well. So it's really, really good to see a lot of sort of big names sort of coming into the, in the, in the, the game now. We've obviously seen recently the Clint Torn has already been mentioned there in the news. You know, Lauren Wade's now came back to play for them as well. They're going to certainly be the side to, to beat this season, I would suspect, once again. Yeah, well, I think, you know, it showed that, you know, last season as well, they would, they would decide to beat two. And, you know, if you always say, like, who's going to win the league, you know, the Glen, Glen Thorne are always going to be up there. Um, it's a team that everybody wants to play for. Um, mm. Maybe that's me being biased. <laughs> but, just a bit. <laughs> just a bit. But, no, yeah, like, you know, uh, Lauren Wade's had different spells in, in other clubs. And, um, you know, Glen Thorne, she's always played for them whenever she's been home. And... You know, we've got a lot of, um, we've, we've signed a lot of players this season, you know, we've signed one from Limfield and it's looking like a very um, confident team, I think. Yeah, it's going to be hard to beat them this season. Yeah, holding four, team, holding yeah. four trophies at the moment and obviously yeah. they're determined to hold on to all four. In terms of the, the ladies' premiership over here, we've been sent a question and they ask you who do you think the best player is in the NFL Thanks, your bank ladies' premiership. And that question comes from Dino and Marissa, and I don't know who they would be, but uh, they've asked me to ask you that question. <laughs> I'm not going to say them too. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say them too. I don't know. Like, um, I don't know, it's so hard. That's a hard question. No, that's that's probably, not on purpose. probably why the delivery said that but to you, isn't it? That's not on purpose. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, like, it's. I don't know. I actually don't know who would be the best player, but, you know, for me, like, the likes of, like, Kirsty McGuinness and. You know, she's just so consistent in the in the league, and you know, she, no matter what team she plays for, she's always going to score your goals. Yeah, great player. Um, you know, she played. We played with her at Glen Thorne, and we didn't want her to leave because she scores goals and she mm. helps you win games. It's yeah. proven it at the national level too. Um, but no, definitely not Marissa and Mar Mar Dino. They're past it. <laughs> well past it. <laughs> no further comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've heard a lot about Glen Torn ladies over the last 15 months or so, but uh, so I guess it's only right now that we give their cross-town rivals a bit of a say as well. And with that in mind, I spoke to Mia Fitzsimmons via Zoom earlier this week of Linfield ladies, and here's what she had to say. Okay, so we're joined here this evening on the NI Women's Football Show by Mia Fitzsimmons. Mia, welcome to the show and thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me on. Not a problem at all. In terms of yourself, I think the last time I was speaking to you, it was probably at the end of the futsal season, which was a good bit over a year ago. And obviously that's been completely knocking the edge of the COVID thing. Has the loss of the futsal been a big impact on you from your viewpoint? Um, 
it's good to get the futsal like because obviously I don't have any winter football anymore and it gets you like helps you get fitter again because there's it's so fast and there's only five years on the pitch at any one time and last year we had no subs so we were playing full futsal matches like every Friday night and barely any subs but right. it was fun as well like it gave you something to do on Friday night and got you back into the swing of football. Yeah, I must admit, I enjoyed being part of it as well. Now, obviously, it's disappointing it hasn't happened this year, but you've also made up another double disappointing that you were due to be playing for the Northern Ireland under 19s in the European Championships. Was that was also cancelled? Yeah, that was that really did annoy me. Like it was something to look forward to during the year, and obviously last year we had the late rounds cancelled off the back of being in Turkey, which was a really good experience, and we were really positive going into last year's elite rounds, and then. This year, we're really positive coming out of the camp that we had a few weeks ago that we were going to do well and do our best and try and qualify for the finals. But obviously, it was devastating that we couldn't do that. But yeah. there was be- bigger things that was more important, obviously, the pandemic. Yeah. Have you been continuing to training? And despite the fact that it's been cancelled, are you still training? Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm training away. with. I just kept going to training with Northern Ireland on the 19th mm-hmm. and Monday nights in Jonestown because... I had nothing else to do and, and I obviously want to improve as a player and not stop training. Well, that's good to hear that. I think they've replaced that tournament now with another competition from what I'm led to believe. I think it's like a, a group yeah. competition. But I think we have, we have quite a tough draw and I think I've seen with Switzerland, England and the Republic of Ireland, I think it is. So it's yeah, it's very tough draw. It's going, to be a, it's going to be a tough competition. Yeah. So then I will see how that develops. Hopefully you'll be part of that, that side when it comes around. But in terms of what we've brought you in today, it's really to discuss the start of the, the, the women's premiership this season. Obviously, looking back at the last season, Glen Torn, your arch rivals, have lifted all the, all the senior trophies and they're all sitting at the Oval at the moment. And I'm sure that's a situation as a Linfield player you want to try and reverse this time round. Yeah, definitely, because usually it's we're the ones who have most of the trophies, not even all of them, but most of them over at Windsor Park. But Obviously, it hurt to see them when they can get the chance to go to Champions League qualifiers and still hold the Irish Cup and the County Antrim Cup and the League Cup. So, the song we want to do is aim to try and get some of them back. Yeah, that's a very important from that viewpoint. Uh, I'd say the league's getting harder and harder year on year, though, with the Brighton Sim. Yeah, well, more young players are coming up, and then there's more, obviously, the more training everybody's doing, and go, loads of players are going back in training internationally with Kenny squad. Especially loads of the Glen Torn players and all the teams have at least one person there um, training away with them. And there's loads of obviously the younger ones and the younger Northern Ireland set up. So the extra mm-hmm. training's bringing the league standard up massively. Okay. In terms of them, the ladies, are you guys back training them for the start of the season already? Yeah, we've been back training a month or so now, training twice a week. So. Okay. And a difficult enough start of the season. There's no easy games, but you have a, you have a hard match starting up against Sion Swift. So you always. Year after year, seemed to upset the apple cart. They produced some great performances. That's a hard start for you. Yeah, well, every game's going to be a hard game. Like there was, there was no easy game at the start of the season. Like, and obviously the first game of the season, you don't know what anybody's going to be like because obviously you can't play each other in friendlies or no. get to know anybody because we really can't have friendlies. So you just have to go into the first game of the season blank and hope you've prepared right. And Sion are going to come down from Straban knowing what they want to do and obviously get three points from us but we're going to try our best to make sure we get the three points and you followed up a game against Cliftonville I know you have a few friends at Cliftonville giving you a bit of ribbon to turn to get the result on that one Did yeah you don't leave anything sort of already uh, she's always right. <laughs> she's always trying to keep everybody going like <laughs> and then after that you have the third game then you've got Glyn Torn which is obviously going to be a, a key game come, come the rest of the season so that's a big one as well Okay, well, I think that really completes your interview this evening. Thank you very, very much for taking the time to come in to sort of speak to us. And uh, obviously, we wish you every success you know, for this season. Um, hopefully, it's a good season for you. And uh, I'll not say hopefully all the trophies go to limit because that would show bias. And we can't seem to be doing that in any form or shape. But uh, good luck for the season. Anyway. And thank you once again for speaking to us this evening. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for having me on as well. Not a problem. Thank you. Okay, it's time now, uh, then we just have a wee look at the, your career at Rangers. Obviously, with all due respect, you know, getting a professional career at 28 was, was a bit of a bit of a strange one. Usually younger players tend to get the professional contract, so did that come out of the blue? Kind of, but thanks for just telling everybody me, sir. Um, <laughs> I'm actually shortchanging, you're actually 29 <laughs> now, is that right? Yes, I am. Mm, I'm, not, nice to you. I'm not far off the big one. Um, 
yeah, like, obviously I thought that whenever I came back from Australia, you know, my main aim was to get back playing international football and be back being consistent, like playing for the Glens. Um, and obviously we became quite successful. Um, and we had a couple of cup finals and somebody had said, oh, there's a couple of people from Rangers here watching. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I never really thought anything of it um, because we were playing Linfield at Windsor. And we had like the likes of, we've got all those younger players coming through, you know, like I remember Chloe McCarr was playing Santa Red for Linfield. Um, and he just thought that, you know, Rangers were turning professional, that they were just coming over. And mm -hmm. I think if a club starting professional, they want to go for all the, the kind of younger players. And at that time, I was playing Santa Red as well. And and then I think that we played um, Sion in the cup final at Seaview. Yeah. And they were there as well. And then it was only really like a week or so after that there that they um, gave me a call and just said, would you want, we would like to invite you over to train for a week. And again, like I can be quite laid back at times. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll go over for a week and, and see what see what it's like. So I went over and trained and um, it was good. Like it was an enjoyable experience um, just to see obviously the training ground and, and the environment in which mm -hmm. everybody was playing in. Um, and then maybe the start of December, they called and just offered me a contract. And I think at that time, like, the contract could have been anything because I didn't think that, you know, like you said, 28, that I was going to be turning professional. But mm -hmm. it was a club like Rangers, just too hard to turn down. No, you certainly can't you turn know? them down. What a year it's been for Rangers overall as a club, obviously, their 55th title is for the yeah. men and so forth. I mean, and obviously you're in, a, in an environment now which basically means you could be rubbing shoulders with Stephen Gerrard, Stephen Davis at any sort of stage in time. That must be so surreal. Yeah, I think at the start, um, when we were in the training ground, you know, it's been a very stop-start time for me personally at Rangers. Um, but at the very, you know, at the very start, like we are lucky that we both get treated equally. And you know, the training ground, you can come and go as you please. And you know, we do cross paths quite a lot. And I think at the start, to see like Stephen Jarrett in the corridor was was very <laughs> surreal. But I do like the, you know. Don't be too starstruck, if you know what I mean. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think as I've got older, I've realised that, you know, just because they're a male, like, they're seeing the same job as us, you know, and obviously, because they're, they're known all around the world, it, it does become a bit surreal. But now, as time goes on, you just kind of, you walk past and you say hello. And mm -hmm. it's just a normal part of your day. Fair enough. I like it again. Yeah. In terms of the actual standard of football in Scotland, how does it compare with how things are going in Northern Ireland at the moment? Well, I think, like, the Scottish League, um, Obviously, it's not the standard isn't quite as good as what it would be down south in England, and I think it has come a long way. I think it's Scotland football. You know, the SFA have put a lot of money into that, into the back end of that league too, and I think that you know, in time, it, it will improve as well. Yeah, in terms of the league itself, Rangers obviously going very, very well at the moment. I think it's just one defeat so far this season. Obviously, Glasgow City are the the big side over. I think they won something. Like 13 consecutive titles or something bizarre like that. Now I know their level on points ranges at the moment. Obviously the sides have to meet again. But you've had a good win over them earlier in the season. You beat them 5-0, right and so. Yeah, I think I was a shock to their system, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, we t we signed four of their players. Um, which I think is, um, it's massive. You know, I don't think that that would happen in the men's game. I don't think the four no. players would be allowed to go from one club <laughs> to the other. No. Um, but yeah, like we signed, you know, four other players and we went out and um, yeah, we beat them 5-0 and I think it was a big statement for us. You know, I think it was the first year that Rangers were professional um, and so we had a point to prove and I think so far, you know, we've done, we've done it. I think we've maybe only conceded three goals. Um, I don't think they're missing me too much though. They did have me no, on their back. So, good, good win last week, yeah. Um, yeah, no, we're, we're very consistent and... Um, you know, I think it's proven that, you know, training every day and stuff is really bad for us. Yeah, no doubt about that. OK, it's time now in the show for one of my favourite parts of the show, and that's coffee time. This is the part of the show where we ask our guests if they had the chance to take one person for coffee in a chat, who that one person would be. Here's coffee time. So tell me, say coffee time, you have a choice of bringing somebody along for this cup of coffee and an imaginary chat, who would you bring along? Uh, so I picked um, Alex Ferguson. Okay, second consecutive week with Manchester United influences, Kenny picked George Best, you're going for Alex Ferguson, what's your thinking behind Alex? 
Well, George Best would have been a good one, since we're from the same estate. Um, there you go. Are you saying you saw that all the skillful people come from your estate? Is that the idea? Well, you said it, not me. So. <laughs> um, yeah, like, well, I'm a Manchester, like, Manchester United fan. Okay. Um, I'm also a Rangers fan, too. So I just think, um, I want, like, I would really love to ask him about wanting to the travel in 99. Okay. Like, um, but yeah, like, what, what a man. He just knows how to win leagues and knows yeah. how to change a gamer in seconds. Yeah. I mean, his manager, there's no doubt about it. I mean, there's no doubt he has changed the whole course of the history of Manchester United Football Club. You know, um, he was very, very close maybe for a while there, maybe not even to sort of, you know, getting through the first few years of his management. Things weren't going terribly well, but he turned it around. I mean, that's the sort of a culture we don't really see in modern football nowadays. It seems to be managers there for a lot of, maybe a month, or even a year or so. Side's so not going well, they're out the door, basically, which is... Yeah, well, I think what he got was time, unlike any other managers now. And you know, it just shows you what you do whenever you have a bit of time to turn things around, you ended up being the most successful manager in the world. Would you, um, get, would you get over to Manchester Man 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 United Games? A few, a few, not as many as I would like. Um, right. But I just I can never get over to the games. Like we always had like training on Saturday mornings or Sunday mornings, and at that time, like I was a bit of a nerd. I never missed training. <laughs> I didn't like I didn't like the missed training. Okay. Um. So yeah, I didn't get over to many as much as I would like. But um, yeah, no, definitely. There's I've just got like huge respect for him. Like, you know, look at his management career. Um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely a great man, no doubt about it. Okay, Dami, listen, thank you very, very much for coming into the studio today and for doing today's interview. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, um, you know, today to actually do that and hopefully the viewers will have enjoyed it as well. Okay. Thank you very much. And finally just a big thanks to you, the viewer, for taking the time to watch today's show. Hopefully we'll see you all again next time around. But until then, it's bye for now.